A wild and almost unknown land in East Africa, bordered by the Sudan, Kenya, British Somaliland, Eritrea, and what used to be Italian Somaliland. The first victim in the Axis avalanche of aggression and slaughter, justly the first country to be restored to its own people, and a tonic for Britain in the days of reverses, for the restoration was accomplished by the army of the British Empire. Armoured units of the Empire's army led the way into a little village on the outskirts of the city, where the inhabitants were waiting with the royal sign of the Lion of Judah and with words of welcome. The local chieftains stood with the gold and crimson umbrellas of their high rank to welcome the King of Kings, to whom they had remained loyal through five years of bondage. Children whose early days knew only subservience to the Italian tyrant watched the return of the Emperor's sons, the Crown Prince and the Duke of Hara. Warriors who fought with spears against bombers and poison gas waited with their ancient symbols while the Emperor prayed in the little church, giving thanks for his return to free Abyssinia. And as he came out, there was the first burst of acclamation that was to swell to a great crescendo nearer to Addis Ababa. The session started, leading it as a British colonel, one of the many officers of the Empire Army who did such magnificent work in organizing Patriot Army. Following are the native cavalry and infantry, the fighting men of a fighting race who needed modern arms to overthrow the Italian usurper. Those arms were supplied by Britain, and this return in triumph is a promise to all who fight for freedom. The road may be long and hard and dangerous, but the prize at the end of it will be won as surely as it has been here on this day of Ethiopia's rejoicing and homage. What thoughts must be crowding upon the scholarly mind of Haile Selassie as he returns upon the road he traveled to exile five years ago? The bitterness of a struggle that was lost. The abandonment of his just cause by the great powers in the distant palace of that futile League of Nations. That unbelievably disgraceful behavior of Italians who interrupted with whistling as the Emperor put his case before the League. The lonely years in the sanctuary of Britain while he worked for this, the liberation of his unhappy people. As he nears the capital of Ethiopia, as his simple children show their homage and affection, he must be thinking of all these things. <laughs> the strange but proud procession is now nearly in the capital itself. Excitement is rising in a quickening tempo as this African empire writes a page of glorious history. The weird chanting and cheering of Ethiopia reaches a climax at the gates of Addis Ababa as an emperor returns in triumph to his people. Picture to yourself how one day this scene will be enacted again and again. In Czechoslovakia, in Poland, in Holland, Belgium, Norway, Denmark, yes, in France too. And in gallant, glorious Greece, he was the first. Here was the moment of supreme triumph as the Emperor was greeted by the General Officer Commanding in Abyssinia, General Cunningham. Nigerian troops were guard of honor after their victorious campaign. African guns fired a 21-gun salute. This day, five years before, Italian troops had marched into this place. The Emperor stood on the balcony of the Menelik Palace to speak to his warrior subjects. 
He spoke of his friendship with Britain. He called for unity to continue the struggle against godless brutality. It was a source of great satisfaction to me. So ended this moving historic ceremony. So liberty and justice were brought back again into a land that has known only fear and ruthless oppression for five terrible years. The crowds return to their homes as the emperor walks again into the great halls of the palace that seem so strange and yet so strangely familiar. He has shown that faith can live through the darkest years. In our dark days, we shall do well to remember the grim ordeal of these simple people, how they endured and how they came through hell to victory.